Hey family, what you just saw is just a little bit of sparring techniques and principles that we want to keep in and how we attack your opponent. Okay, first off, you know, we don't believe in defense, we believe in offense or counter-offensive techniques. So what you saw was us hitting points, not trying to defend all against points. So uh, these videos are here designed to teach you how to change your mindset. First off, like I said, we don't defend, we attack, we counterattack. So once we understand that, now we have to find the technique behind that. So our job is to learn how to strike the points, not try to block points, uh, get into the target, not get the target away from us. So when you see videos of people, they're always thinking showing self-defense or getting rid of the punch, and then they try to do find the attack. Uh, the problem with that is you're always receiving pressure. So we want to say he throws a punch, we hit them. We hit them, so now we put pressure into them. So this way, we're not receiving pressure. The problem with receiving pressure is you have to deal with it, and you have to absorb it or repel it. We don't want to do that. We want to create the attack. So we want to learn how to create the counterattack or attack techniques. And what do I mean by that is, as he throws the punch, as you see, I am not trying to get the block and waiting for it to come and withstand in the pressure. I'm not going to try and push him away from me. The problem is if someone is strong, they'll take us. If he hits, I hit back too. The difference is, is when I hit, I hit precise. I hit small. I hit on purpose. I hit with intent. I hit with control. And that is what we're trying to teach you through these videos, these series, to change your mindset and change your body's ability to control energy as opposed to resist energy or absorb energy. So. Thank you for the interest of watching NDN, and we do appreciate your support, and we love doing videos for you guys, so please support us so we can make more videos for you guys. Uh, this is just one topic. We're talking a lot of techniques in, in what you do and in, in learn how to hit, not just hit points, but again, manipulate points, control points. If a person's grabbing you, like, you know, our instinct is to get off. We're trying to get away. Instead, you want to learn to get in. He comes, attack, grabs us. We don't try to deal with it by pulling it away. We actually get into the striking. So if a guy does grab us, well, we can go into the strike right off the bat. Um, we create pressure, create damage. We don't want to create force. We don't want to put our mindset to go against the force. We're going to go into the point, into the force. Never against it. Never try to get rid of it. We want to get into them and let them try to go away from us. Okay? So this is what you are going to learn through the NDN system by subscribing and supporting us. And we, like I said, um, we will have a lot of videos with more support that we have. We can create more videos for you guys. We enjoy doing it. We love teaching. I, I love to teach the techniques, the family art, and you're learning something that was not passed outside of our family. So um, this is a great technique that you won't see anywhere else. So uh, we, we, we do appreciate uh, you guys being here and everything. So uh, do you want to have anything to say, Hector? We need your support. And if you want to learn these valuable lessons that this man has, you got to join. I take a beating, and I've never got a hit as hard from a person as Sifu has hit me. Even though you may see that it's very light and very small, it's like a, a, a sledgehammer is hidden. Pickaxe. It's more. like, boom, <laughs> explosive. So if you want to learn this from the only man in the world that actually has this system, please join. I'm here uh, to take more beatings and, uh, <laughs> and do more videos for you and help you out the best I can. Uh, but the only way you're going to learn it is by actually subscribing and getting here right now and now is the moment don't say tomorrow don't say next week don't say i've seen it before you've never seen this 100 percent. i'm telling you you've never ever seen this or felt it and that's another thing if you ever want to join our uh, seminars in the future you're going to feel it but everything that we do here is live it's not rehearsed it's not choreographed it's not fake it's the real deal um, I've been out there. This is the real deal where, where no one else does it like Sifu. So please, um, this is a once in a lifetime. So join it right now while you can. Don't say tomorrow. Don't say, you know, uh, I've done it. I've seen it before. No, you've never seen this before. Give it a chance and you'll be surprised. There's a lot of people I know personally that have seen it and they're like, wow, that's like nothing. Wow, you didn't hardly move. Uh, that's, that can't work. And when I touched them, they were sold on it. So. Get on it right now and subscribe and join. And thank you again. We do appreciate your support.
Hey family, what is up? Welcome to another Wednesday public Q&A here on Facebook and YouTube at Enter Tai Chi and Enter Shaolin. I'm your host CJ Jamie. This is Sifu Fu. And Sifu Larry is going to probably pop in and out per usual uh, in the background. So let us know if you can hear us okay and if we're coming in clear on your end. And thank you in advance for that. So let's see who is on. Hi. Do you have anything to say to the people? Mm, man of little words today. All right. <laughs> so uh, on uh, YouTube, we have Errol on. Errol's coming in from the London, UK. How are you, brother? John says, happy Wednesday, family. South Jersey here. Ed says, hi. Um, OK, hey, hey, Ed. Good to see you on. We got called well on. Dominic is on. Hey, Dominic, also coming in South Jersey. Good stuff. All right, Sandu's coming in from India. This is if you guys have questions, ask them now so we can answer it. Yeah, yeah. We have someone that did send in a question, so I will do theirs while you guys are thinking of your questions. Uh, we got Vinicius uh, coming in from Brazil. Donnie coming in from Oklahoma. Nice. Hey, Donnie, did you know that Sifu Larry, once upon a time, lived in Oklahoma? Pop quiz for y'all that have been around for a while. John is coming in from Washington Township, specifically, because someone asked about where that was. Dominic is over towards Atlantic City. And yeah, we're kind of like, Almost uh, in the middle of those two, actually. <laughs> Almost in the middle of those two. That's where we are in South Jersey. All right. We also got Ray on. Hey, Ray. Good to see you on. Um, also, people that are on YouTube, if you guys want your questions to be answered first, you can also give us a little tip to jump ahead of the line. Uh, underneath where you comment, there's a little dollar sign, and you can do that anytime you want. Any amount, like, you know, just thank you in advance for giving us some tip. Or if you just love the content we're putting out there and you appreciate us and you want to give us a little love gift, you can go and do that as well. You don't have to have a question. You can have a comment, question, or just gratitude. All is good. All right, family. Okay, I'm going to go over to Facebook. Lester is on. Lester says, greetings, Sifu Fu, Sifu Larry, and Sifu Jamie. And Lester Ooh. says, all clear. Thank you. Thank you. I think you're the only person that actually answered that. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Lester. All right. Oh, oh, there. Errol also said it. Audio and live stream. Excellent. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right. So let me go over here to a question that we had come in. Give me a moment. All right, I had to go back to the inbox. Sorry about that. I thought I had it up, but then I didn't. Also, guys, uh, I had, a, well, we had a really good, uh, both Steve Larry and I had a really, really good orientation uh, with one of our newer members, uh, Ronnie, um, that was on Monday. I'll share a little bit about that. I don't think he'll mind uh, me sharing what he uh, said at the, the end of it and, and also, um, what he sent us to, so I don't think I don't think he'll mind. So let's see where that other question was. By the way, speaking of our members, guys, uh, our members Q and A's that we have tomorrow uh, at the same time, 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're able to like actually pull up videos or have people share their you know uh, their video and stuff like that live and get critiques and different things like that. So it's a lot more immersive than what we do here like a lot. And that's kind of like how our training is inside a membership site. It's a lot more immersive than the stuff you guys and gals are going to find on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, because obviously like we want to go in depth for our members in full detail. So that's some of the stuff that's different between this one and the one we have tomorrow for those of you that are wondering. So this came from Frank. Frank said, Dear Sifu, I'm from Belgium and I have a question. When someone pushes their arm against your arm, you have to dissipate their energy by pushing in the direction where you feel their force most on your arm, question mark, with thanks. All right, is he on? Probably I not. don't believe he is, but I will let him know uh, that we cover this. In I'm going to answer that time. question. It's, um, <laughs> it's one of these things, uh, should I answer it? 
shouldn't Okay, so answered. I want you to give him the short of the answer, but not okay. too much detail seafood. Because, you know, we got, uh, we got members on here, and we want to respect giving them the extra good stuff. So we'll give you the basics of this. The rule is you never push against someone's force. You push enough to create structural integrity and the difference you convert. Okay? An example, I always tell people, anytime pressure goes into your, you make contact in your arm anywhere, it must always go to the wrist. Follow the three proof guidelines. Always set energy to the wrist. Okay? So I'm going to do a real short thing. I'm not going to go great detail, but if someone's pushing my arm, I don't care how it does it, okay? The goal is to get all pressure in the wrist. Okay, that's how it should be. So if I told her she could push my arm backwards, like take okay. both hands, push it. A lot of people try to push back. Okay, do that again. You actually bring it to your hand, then you can take your hand to bring it back. If you try to push back, any strong force will obviously knock your arm back. The goal is to take any pressure, put it towards the hand. So this way, look, let, let's go back, go back. Okay. See my elbow all the way out here, past my ribs here, push my arm. See how she can push it all the way to my ribs? If I do it like this, it doesn't go anywhere. You see? Any pressure that goes in my arm, I should always drive the energy towards the hand. That way, instead of pushing this way, she's actually pushing downward. And then I can bring it to my hand, and I use that energy in my hand, and I return the energy back to the opponent. All right, that's, I think that's all we need to that's, say. That's, that's, that's what I want to say. I think that might that's have been... the basic three-proof rule. Too, always take pressure and bring it towards the hand. <laughs> Let me know. Do not bring it back to point, otherwise you are fighting your opponent. You never want to fight against them, you fight with them. And what I mean by that is you, you have enough force to hold structural integrity. Anything more than that, you must convert. And Anything if you say any more than that, our members are going to revolt, okay? You can't say no more. So, <laughs> I'm serious, y'all. We get in trouble uh, lately for giving too much information. And really over the years we have, but especially since we started doing the members q a's literally the next day after these are like yo you said too much the other night you gotta stop doing that that's that's for the fam the the insider fam so we've been getting in trouble for that so we're, we're trying to keep it a little bit more short and concise let me know if that was too much fam or if that was just right <laughs> uh lester says i am starting uh chum kill sections now and it's beautiful and so wise awesome congratulations Clark said, hey, I'm new. How do you deflect kicks to the body or face? Uh, it depends on what kind of kick. <laughs> you're, you're asking me, <laughs> give me a specific give, kick. Give us a specific kick. Yeah. General rule of <laughs> any type of deflection, again, you follow three, three uh, proof, right? You, you have to create the interception, okay? Uh, it follows the three C, connect, form, control. That's the basic rule, right? You got to make some connection, that's your connection. Uh, make some point of contact, that's your connection, okay? Uh, uh, connect, the conform. Basically, you got to feel what the energy is telling you. You got to move according to what the energy dictates and what your structural integrity is holding. And then control basically means is how you convert that energy back to the opponent, okay? Uh, whether it's on contact point or towards uh, impact point. It, it doesn't really matter. It depends on how you want to do it. So any type of kicks that you can do. Now, there's legs way of intercepting and there's arms way. It just depends, like, uh, what the height is. Obviously, I wouldn't use my leg to block to the head. Uh, I'd rather mm -hmm. use my arms. Uh, if it's still the legs, like low to my knee, I wouldn't bring my hands down towards my knees. It exposes me and everything. I, anything that comes from like the waist down, I can use the leg. Anything from the waist up, I can use the arm in that. So, but if it goes from like the solar plex, I would use my arms. If it goes below my, my, by, by my thighs, seven knees, then I would use my legs. Uh, you don't want to compromise your body trying to block things going like downward like this. Um, you, you, if it's really low, you, you actually want to do this with your legs. If it's here, you, can, you have the choice between your leg and your arm. It's a midpoint. If it's higher, obviously I would use my arms. I would never want to bring my legs up that high. It's just too much. So um, depending on what kind of kick, you always want to make some type of base contact and a point to intercept. And then rotate your wrist if you're going to use your hands, let's say, and rotate with your body to, to dissipate the pressure. And if it's in your legs, you want to hit on a certain angle to pop the, the leg out. And again, it depends on what kind of kick you're talking about. Some kicks, I'd rather just avoid it. If All I right. see a guy doing Seafood, a round kick. Uh, I, we got a complaint. You, you're going too far. That, that was gold, and that was a lot I'm done. of gold. I'm sorry. Next question. We, I'm we done. Gotta go. We gotta go. I'm sorry. If you want more, you're gonna have to join Enter Shaolin. <laughs> you gotta you got come check it out. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a lot of gold, Clark. If you didn't catch that, if you walked away for a little bit, you can always catch the replay after this because uh, you didn't, you know, write back what specific kick you were talking about. But there was a lot of gold there for anyone that was really paying attention. Clark says that was gold. See? See? You're on the same page, Clark. Good stuff. <laughs> that was right. 
Absolutely. Uh, Tracy asked if that was tow. That was the question before. So, tow is transfer of energy. Yes, mm -hmm. it can be tow, but it's not only tow because yeah. tow can, can, doesn't have to go the, out towards your hands alone. Tow can be like, again, when <laughs> we're talking about grappling stage, it's, yeah. it's different. Yeah. So striking, yes, toe is towards the hand. But when you grapple, toe can be towards the shoulders, towards the elbow, towards the body. It, it just the, depends. Because yeah. you have different point of contacts at grappling. Or striking is oh, generally yeah. arms and legs. The whole body, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Errol says, pass or resistance never forced against force. And Venetia says, application. Andy Toby says, hello from the Windy City. I'm still looking for training partners near me. Yes, there's got to be someone out there, Andy Toby. I know that there's got to be someone out there in Chicago. Can't be the only one. You can't be. I don't believe it. Um, and she said, could you please show some allocation of cylinder Application. Tau? Oh, okay. Oh, he, but he said allocation. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I already read it. I, mean, okay. I know what he meant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I was just reading it as I've seen it. I was like, could you please yeah. show some application of cylinder Tau? Please, okay. please, please, please. Okay. So let's, let's, let's do the first only like this. Here, 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 okay? I'll just take something short like that. Uh, the point of doing this, okay? Now, there's, obviously, there's different techniques for that. Uh, I need CJ Jamie to come here to be my uh, uh, thing. So when, when doing the Sorry. grab, <laughs> what, the reason why you do this is to take any pressure, like especially that grappling state, and learn how to convert that. So if she's grabbing me, like now, you can do both hands at the same time, but it is to, like, so grab my hand. Like, do not let my arm okay. She'll use two hands. So in the technique, right, I'm going to do it wrong. So a lot of people will, will do this. Don't let me, don't let me, what are you doing? There you go. The technique is learning how to control the wrist. So look a second, look, look. So you know, when we do this, we rotate. Now, some people do something differently. I'm not going to go into that big, big thing. But yeah, watch, yeah, yeah. don't let me bring it up. Okay. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do it wrong. I'm not going to tell when I do it right. So that way she doesn't just oh, okay. let me do it. Okay. So don't let me do it. So I'm going to go like this. Don't let me use more strength. Come on, come on. There you go. So when you do it right, okay. So you see, I get my hands up that way. Okay. Uh, again, it's about learning to do the three proof properly. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not going to break it down because I'm going to get yelled well, at again. On the site. But you can see so this technique here is to, is to teach you how to ar articulate any pressure. So if anybody grabs me, like she's grabbed me, I can easily take my hands and bring it back up. Okay. Uh, it's to take any pressure, and I'm not going to explain. I'm just showing you application. Okay. So it's like this. See how in the form you do this? So it's like this. So it allows me to take a downward, upward. It's to take any gripping point along the arm, rotate the energy, and bring it up. Now, I'm not going to explain how it's done. I'm just showing you that it's done. And this, if you go back and here, watch our other videos, I mean, look, there's plenty of information that's been dripped for you guys. That this here, join, so. here, this point here, when you come up like this, it's so one of the, again, again there's many multiple applications, but this technique, when you do this, is to teach you how to break the grip. So when you turn the wrist, so when you do like this and you turn your hands, so it's, so it's teaching me how to cut. This open here could be like she's grabbing me, and, and so you just learn how to come up this way. The reason why you got to describe is, is, you know, some people will do it like this, and it's, it's not going to work because you see that's a wrong technique. You see my here, so you can see what I'm doing here. When, I won't even tell her when I'm going to do it wrong, right or wrong, but you can see when you're doing the technique, okay, so you can see when you're doing this, this is why we break down the form and teach you how to apply it properly. Um, it's very important, again, to understand the principles behind what you do, not just to do it. It's like, uh, yeah. I always like to say, dancing is about moving in steps. It's about feeling the music. Doing your technique is about feeling the energy, not about just making the movement. And again, this is where the difference is between uh, people being able to succeed in techniques versus failing techniques. Often I say it's not the techniques that fail, it's that you either fail the technique. If you're, pro if you're taught the technique properly. Right. Okay. That's um, true. So this is just one. Okay. Obviously the punch in the form is, is pretty simple. <laughs> it's, it's for the punch. Okay. But it's also different because there are people who I always show like, I, 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 when I meet any Wing Chun guy, I, I, always, I always say, okay, just give me, hit, me, hit me as hard as you can possibly hit me. And they, they will hit me in the chest as I walk in. And then, and you have to do it right, okay? I'm going to have CJ Jamie hit me in the chest. Oh, my God. Okay? Oh, she's going to no. hit me. She's going to no, hurt no, me because no. she knows how to do it right. No, no. We're going we're gonna to do this for the members tomorrow. No. I'm just talking <laughs> about the, the, the technique-wise. I'm not explaining it. But a lot of times, people will fail. And it's okay, she's not a master. so I don't I'm not a master it. at all. But if I walk to her like this, and she hit me as hard as she can in the chest, and you can see she moves backwards, it's a sign that you didn't do the technique right. 
Okay, she's not a master, so I don't expect her to mm -hmm. do it. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to hit her because it does hurt a lot. But the whole point of it is, is you're supposed to be able to practice your technique and pressure test it to see if it works. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually That's use a pad. That's very important. Very important. So this way it doesn't hurt her chest. But a lot of people, when she walks into me, like, and you go, like, and you get this, it's a sign that you did not do the technique right. Okay. When when you're practicing your technique. You have to see if it works. So if she's walking into me, you're supposed to strike that out and be able to stop them without you having to throw your weight, without uh, you do it again, and get, get knocked back. Uh, you don't want to be like doing this and come and like, ugh. you have to practice the technique when you're doing it. It's just rooting and getting your power out. And, and that's learning how to get your technique right. So practicing application isn't about learning the moves. It's about feeling the energy behind the moves so you can then do the move properly. Um, all your forms should be pressure tested. And if you want to learn pressure testing, I'm actually going to start making a video through Stone Tao and teach people mm -hmm. how to do pressure testing to see if it works. Yeah, because, we're going to do a series on that. Yeah, we're going to do a series mm -hmm. on that. But to test your Stone Tao to see if you do it right. Like, you got to see if, like, and this is a pressure test. I'm not teaching the technique behind it. She'll go like this, let's say. No, no, just behind, like here, like yeah. that. So if I just hold my finger and my thumb, she's supposed to be able to punch forward and be able to bring that towards me and more base, trust me. There you go, there you go. That's it. And so some people, that if you're straining, um, you're gonna actually, your technique is off. You're not mm. doing the technique right. You're supposed to be able to take any gripping point and you're supposed to be able to just drive that punch back like that. Do it again. And if I'm like this, I'm not doing it right. So you have to learn how to properly set your technique and, and getting your punch right. And you see how she moves backwards trying to hold me? Um, do it again. Like, and you see how I can go backwards again. I'm not doing the technique. I'm not teaching the technique. I'm just saying this is how you'll have to learn to see pressure testing and uh, see if you can do these techniques. If she's doing a tan sal from the hand, horse stance, go like this. And I just go like this. So just do a tan sal. And she's supposed to be able to bring that forward without feeling that challenge. If you're doing it wrong, like, like, okay. like just, and don't let me do it. And okay. you, you get knocked backwards. You're not doing the technique right. You're supposed to be able to do this. And when you do it, you see them move. And you notice, I'm not even like throwing my weight. I just do the technique. And if I do it right, that's what happens. I do it like this, and then it's no good. So we're going to do a series of pressure testing mm -hmm. for a silent towel. So that way, if you are a Wing Chun practitioner, if you pressure test and you can do that, then yes, you are learning the proper way. If you're doing these pressure tests and you're like, crap, I, I, they're always able to stop me. I'm always straining to do it. Then you're doing it wrong. Yep. And um, how to do it right, that's Enter Shaolin. You're going to go to Enter Shaolin <laughs> and learn the techniques through that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And hey, hey, members, let me know if you watch this. Because I know some of you already are on here currently watching this live. Would you like to have us do that a little bit more in depth tomorrow and have him give me a little bit more power because I could have handled a lot more than that. And well, you guys deserve to see the real stuff. So let me know if you want the extra, extra stuff. You let me know. Catch you later says howdy, woo sweet. All for more some Sil and Tao lessons said Silas. And also hello from Brooklyn. Hey Silas. Uh, Venetia says, thank you. That was a very nice explanation of application. It was, man. I can't believe I got to stop letting him talk too much. <laughs> was it Ed? Ed or Errol? One of you. I think maybe it was Errol. Maybe. Ed or Errol. Let me know which one of you recommended that we need to have a timer <laughs> to answer the questions. It's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, yeah, no, all of us agree. You should stop that. Stop doing that. Uh, anime says, how do you see multiple punches coming and how to block them? Well, obviously, technique, uh, when people are punching, if you want to be able to see it because they're fast, you've got to keep a certain distance. Mm -hmm. Okay? If it's, it, the, obviously, the closer it gets, the harder it is for you to see punches coming. Sometimes it's in a blind spot. Sometimes they're so fast. Sometimes they can fan you out. These are all things that, right. that can allow you we to We actually hit. talked a little bit about this last week about there's, training your peripherals. There's two ways, okay? to be able to uh, deal with punches, okay? With fast punches. One, make a certain distance. Keep that distance away. Let them extend themselves. Let them have to telegraph by moving in. Keep that distance. That's one way. The other way to be able to handle all multiple punches is you can make contact with them. Once you can make contact with the arms, you can actually, if you're good at the feeling sensitivity, especially how Wing Chun or Tai Chi people would do, you can feel their intent. 
and you can actually uh, control that if you have proper training. Okay, those are the two ways that you can deal with multiple strikes. Close in the distance, get the contact to the arms, and then you can feel what they do, or maintain a certain distance so you can handle it according to your training. Those are the two ways you can do it. I actually uh, fought a guy who was supposed to have been like, back, back in my day when I was younger, you know, back, you know, five years ago. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> more like 25 years ago. Um, but um, there was a guy who traveled all over across the country from when I was hearing about this guy. And he went to competitions, he fought all these people, and for some reason he wanted to fight me here as a teacher. I guess he wanted to put another notch under his belt <laughs> uh, and everything. But Ouch. he always had this look at, at my face, and he, I could tell he wanted to fight me. And I was I heard stories about him from all these people, like, oh, this guy travels, he's, he's always fighting people, and he's, he's winning all the time, he's really, really good. He's trained under somebody in Philadelphia, this uh, Sifu. I think his name was Dr. Sun at the time. I, 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 he might have passed away, he was very old. But, um, if you guys ever know him, he's, he was from Philadelphia, Dr. Son, very famous uh, uh, martial arts teacher and um, in, in Pennsylvania, I guess. Um, but uh, he challenged me. I got to the point where I, I couldn't say no. I, he kind of cornered me. So I was like, all right. And then um, basically, I said, how do you want to uh, start? You want to just you know, stand separate or you want to connect or whatever you want to do? Uh, we can start off like the connection so we bridged our arms together. And uh, we just kind of like felt each other move, press this, that. And I said, screw it, I'm just going to attack him first because I'm going to get it over with. If he can beat me, then hopefully he'll be able to train me. He'll be willing to train right, me and right. I can learn from him. So I attacked him. He countered me. I countered him back right after and I shot him down and I hit him. And he was, his eyes just opened up. And my heart, you ever see the movie The Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas? His heart was like this. And when he had the spirit of Christmas, it was like, like this. That was the way my, 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 my ego was. It was like, I was like, oh man, he's going to kill me. And after I felt his energy, I was like, yeah, it's like, he ain't nothing. I, I guess I just heard stories about him. And, you know, I saw him move and he was really nice when he was practice for him. He knew how to flow. He knew, I, I saw his technique it was real sharp. And I was like, crap, man, he might be that good. <laughs> but once I felt his energy, it was over. I, I killed him. But I was able to feel his intent. He was trying to throw all these punches, but I could feel his intent. And I was able to control it because I was able to contact. I could feel his uh, muscle twitch. I could feel his intent. I actually shut him down for some point and told him, don't strike me this way because it, I, I can easily tell what you're doing. He was, he was thinking he didn't even do it yet. He was just about to, and I shut him down on it. And um, he's like, how did you even know I was going to punch this way? I was like, because I could feel your intent. As I could feel the muscle twitch in your mm. arms. I could feel the, the, the way his muscles were moving, how his uh, arm was building, the motion. I could feel and I shut him down on it. And I told him what he was going to do before, but he was thinking it. And um, he was you blown away. Said, I was going to say, uh, if you, you, you just said, want look, to know, know this. Said, look, <laughs> no, wait, I don't know wait, exactly wait, what he's saying. Wait, wait. wait they got to join Innerstyle.com forward slash join. I shouldn't elaborate. And like actually do Tai Chi and Qigong. You're talking too much. You're giving away too much information. Going. <laughs> to get you that kind of skill. Um, so. But I, I, I was like, everything he did, I shut him down, shut him down, shut him down. Uh, once I made contact, it was over. Like in the beginning, when he came distance, as soon as I, I connected to him, I just bridged in, hooked into his wrists uh, and his um, forearms and elbows. And uh, it, was, it was done after that. It, it was easy for me to take him. He, was, he lost his self-control because he was just doing everything he can to hit me after that. I could just feel hate and intent to hit oh, and kill. No. You know? I was like, <laughs> it was good. easy. It was, just, it was just so magnifying. It was like, like a small letter being magnified, magnifying glass. It, you could just see it. You know, see it right there. So I could just feel his intent. It was just really much. And um, people were like blown away. Like, holy cows. Like, they couldn't believe that this guy's like, there was somebody who's like, oh my gosh, you met your match. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, in my head, I was like, that guy's something. Yeah, in my head, I was like, that guy's nothing. <laughs> like, who trained this guy? But oh. uh, anyways, but he, he, he's supposed uh. to be very, very good, beat everybody all across the country, traveled all over, went to all these fighting stuff and, tour, and, and just beat everybody. And uh, when I, I fought him, I was like, I just feel him easy. So that, like I said, that's one way you can control people with multiple attacks. If you can't connect, then you want to keep, like I said, that distance. Let him reach. <coughs> Feign him afterwards. You can throw feigning techniques. You know, if we're, we're far away and she's trying to come in, you can be like, like get, get these feigning techniques. Just make them get distracted. Take away their focus. Stick your finger towards their eyes and bring up a leg. Let them see as they're coming, like, whoa, like, there's this attack coming. Uh, that's a way that can disrupt someone's attack. It's a mental game type of thing. Now, like I said, the other way is like get, get that distance so you can read. Um, the better experience you have, the closer you can get. But there comes a point where when you get to, to a certain range, it's very hard to see any type of punch. You've got to connect to them at that range. When you're at mid-range or close range, you should be connecting to them. If not, you should be striking them. You should not be learning to block 
If you have to feel like you have to defend, just step backwards first. Re re regroup yourself, find your root, find your structure, and then re-engage. Once you re-engage, that's when you should be like in the point where you should be connecting and striking. Yep, yep. Clark says, cool demo for sure. Uh, Robert says, hello, Kung Fu brothers and sisters. Hello. And Clark also said, hello, nice, fun stories. And then we got... Was it fun uh, for him? <laughs> okay, oh, here, here's the funny thing, okay? okay? The next time I saw him, like, he was, like, standing all big and tall, like he wanted to take me down. The next time I saw him, he kind of his hands, and he just stand there, waiting to talk to me. I was like, hey, what's up? And then my head's like, what, he wants to fight again? I was like, this guy just... But he actually goes, um, I, I go, is there something you want? And he's like, uh, yeah, I would like to know. He said it quietly. He's like, I would like to know if you could teach me. And I was like, wow, like, wow. Like, I was like, well, uh, I was like, you're already learning under Dr. Sun. I was like... I can't really teach you unless I get his permission. If he gives you his permission, sure. But if not, I, I can't do that. I mean, right. you know, me, I won't yeah, teach no, another student's, uh, uh, teach a student because unless it's, it's they're disrespectful cool it. to yeah. them. Unless yeah. they say it's okay. Yeah. But he's, I said, you have to ask your teacher first. You know? And his teacher said no. So, uh, but it was, it was, uh, it was, just, it was, it was just funny because I thought he was about to fight again. I, was, I wasn't scared of him no more. I was like, I, I know this guy. I, I can tell what he's going to do before he, he can do it. So I just shut him down quick, easy. I was like, what, he's going to fight me again? That's no big deal. I'm not scared of this guy no more. And uh, he asked me to teach him. It was so funny. That was funny. Um, I did say that it was him that mentioned the timer. Okay. All right. I, I knew it was one of you guys. Because you guys have both been sending some uh, suggestions of things that we should change up here on these public Q and A's. Uh, Ed also said, "Learning a technique is easy. Understanding the technique is another story." Yeah, <laughs> and I would even say that sometimes you can mentally understand what you're supposed to be doing, but your body is like not willing to comply yet. That's fun. That's that's fun when you're at that stage. Uh, Sand dude said, "Sifu Fu, CJ Jamie, and Sifu Larry." I was wondering if you like watching survival shows, and would you be a part of the show if you ever get a chance? I don't watch survival shows. I actually watch Alone. That was a survival show. That was pretty cool. But do you, in general, but, like tend to watch a lot of those? No, or, no, no. That was the only. First, that's the first one I ever seen. A See, friend of mine told me it was a competition. It's really cool. Okay. I, I watched it. So Sifu, Larry, and myself, we even like before we were like even friends, we're both people that tend to watch like survival stuff. Um, just They're in waiting general. for the doomsday, the doomsday preppers. Uh, no, I'm not waiting for doomsday. I just like to be prepared for anything. I guess it's more like a Boy Scout, doomsday Boy Scout type of thing. That follows along the doomsday preppers. No, I'm not paranoid about it, though. No, um, you're not paranoid, but you want to be ready for it. <laughs> I think there's like extremes, you know, you got to find that balance um, as best as you can. But I would say that depends on the show, at least for me. Sifu Larry? What? Sifu Larry. Um, we like watching survival shows. You like that, watching that kind of stuff, right? Come out here. Come out here. This is um, from Stan Dude. He said that, yeah, you know. Man. Yeah, Okay. No, 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 sir. One more thing, buddy. Okay. Uh, did, did I say the man was done asking you questions? No, he still wants to know something. Okay, you're going too fast. Just calm down. Uh, <laughs> he wants to know, would you be a part of this show if you ever got a chance? And I said, for me personally, it would depend on which survival show we're talking about. Is there donuts involved? Probably not. <laughs> but, if, but with a money win, wait, 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 or could win, what's the variable? there, there could be loan, lots of donuts. If it's like a loan, I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> no, it's not. no, but That's yeah. surviving. All by yourself? Like, what, what are we talking about survival? Just getting thrown out in the wilderness? Some no, it's different shows that we've some watched. So, okay, how about this? Some Spartan stuff, dude. Ask me, <laughs> ask us which show you want to know if we would do, if we were given the chance, and then we'll let you know. Because there's a lot of them out there, and there's a lot of them I would say no to. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> so. uh -uh -uh. Okay, we covered that one. Uh, HLB says, here's a question. Why, when I tell people pressure test, they immediately assume sparring? Because sparring is a form of pressure testing. The difference yeah. between uh, pressure testing, where you're just showing pressure testing, mm -hmm. versus sparring is one is instinctive, the other mm -hmm. is prep. You, when you're showing technique, you're already showing that you can do it. But the question is, can you do it when you don't know it's coming? And that's where the sparring is. That's the difference. You can do it because you know it's coming, 
and you can do it, which is good, but can you do it instinctively? If you're ready your mind to do it, great, but can you do it when it's not ready? That's the difference. And sparring is good. It's a, it is a form of pressure testing, and that's actually the ultimate form of pressure testing. Because uh, you've got to see it, you can do it in that moment without thinking about it. That's when you know you got it. Um, when you're doing a demonstration, you, you can show that you have it, but the question is, do you have it at all times? Or you can only have it when you're ready for it. And the sparring is a great way of pressure testing. So uh, it's fine. You know, show them the pressure test. At the end of the day, really comes down to your power to create the damage because they're not going to respect your blocks. They're not going to respect your deflections or your turns or your conversion unless you do the damage. Now, I've sparred many people in the past with MMA guys, Muay Thai guys, and the only thing they can really acknowledge and answer to is the fact that you can hurt them. If you can't hurt them, they're not impressed. You're not impressed with all this, this flow you have, with all the power you can generate in the air or the speed, the sound snaps you make. It is, is that enough to hurt them? Okay. When I've, I've had to spar many people in my, my past, and at the end of the day, you know, I always say it comes down to two things when it comes to fighting. It comes down to two different things, okay? two, two elements. What you take versus what you can give, right? No matter what your technique is, unless you got magic or you got kryptonite, what can you do to Superman, right? All the techniques you learn cannot hurt him because he can take anything. He can take a bullet to the eye, for my goodness sakes. You know? So um, it comes down to can you do the damage? It comes down to that. And if you show them that you can take their damage, this is one of the things I do. I, I let them hit me as hard as I can so I can show that the most powerful hit they make can't even do damage to me. And then I hit them, and I show them I can do damage to them. So when we spar, I hit that, 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 that body. They're, oh, oh, and they get yeah. that. Sifu Larry did the same thing. He spars people. He damages their arms. Like, oh. I like to weapon strike people's arms. Let them know, like, dude, I'm they not just hurting do. your body. I can, I can hurt your limbs. Will. You can strike me all you want. I'm going to break your arm when you do that. Um, so it comes down to that thing at the end. You know, all these people who are like fighters, their respect is if you can hurt them. Mm -hmm. So... That pressure test that you show, you have to show that pressure test that can do the damage. Because great, you can, you can pressure test by bringing your arm forward, but at the end of the day, can you create the energy behind that technique under pressure? Right, right, right. And, and that's, that's, that's why they always say, let's spar, let's spar, because they want to see what you can do randomly, not because it's rehearsed. It's kind of like uh, wushu. If you rehearse a routine, you can look great, right. but that's because you know it's coming. But when you have to fight, when you don't know it's coming, now it's about your instinct, your reflex, and your training. You know, your responsibility and your technique under that training. And that's really you know, why everybody says, well, it's, okay, we'll spar. Let's see what you can do. Because that's, that's the ultimate form of pressure testing. Absolutely. All right, so uh, Sandude said, how about like a show like Man vs. Wild or Dual Survival? So, see for Larry, come on over. So <laughs> that doesn't this doesn't involve me. Yeah, you I, don't you didn't watch either one of those ones. So I like dual survival actually. Okay. So what's so the question? hold on, would you go on a show is like it, hold on? Sh 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 no, but if you get the money, then maybe you know. But I don't. I don't even think either one of these. He'll attack any donuts with so horns no, and four legs. No prizes, but <laughs> no you prizes. might get. You might. You might become famous. I, I might mean, become famous. You might make money that way. But um, so like man versus wild, which is. Wait, isn't that that one guy? Isn't it like throat? drinking your pee? I don't know. That's that one guy that's all by himself. I don't like drink does, my pee. Right, like if you had to. <laughs> I, had, I still don't know if I would I drink mean, my pee. I thought about maybe, it. Maybe. Like, like, I'm not how sure. How thirsty do I got to be to I drink think my pee? I'm going to be like collecting dew off of leaves in the morning. What if you're in the desert? You ain't going to collect no dew in the desert. There's still ways that Rocks, if, you, if you eat cactus, mud. that has a lot of high water content. What if, you're in a, what if you're in a place where there's not even any cactuses? Then what are you going to do? I'll figure it out. Our ancestors Just, like Dune. You remember the movie bro. Dune? Think Dune. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I got faith in the Lord. Okay. All do you right. remember? Do you remember what happened? So all right. So in the I'm desert, not, I'm not, I do. So <laughs> that's that's what I would be. That's what I would be praying for. So Anna? hold on, hold on. But would you do dual survival? That one, I would. Yeah, well, look. Especially, no. hold on, I want dual survival with Sifu Larry because that would be a hilarious one. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> like, wait, wait, I'm wait, getting bit up. I'll do it for a week. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, so nah, man, there's mosquitoes. And I'm like, <laughs> I hate the mosquitoes. Maybe you should ate some more fruit, bro. Yeah. So do I watch the shows? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, fascinated. <laughs> if the zombies were chasing me and, you know, you know, if it came to God, do we gotta do it? I'll right. do some, but if I don't got to do it, you're not I'm doing not that. so sure. <laughs> Especially if there's no donuts. So it's, a, it's a, you know, not going to happen there. All right, so that's our answers. Um, I would maybe do dual survival 
if I got to pick <coughs> who I had, you know, to, to partner up with, because I saw, you know, when two people work together and when two people don't work together and I'm not interested in the, the, the struggle of an already struggle situation, you know, being in a survival situation. So I'll say that depends on my end on that one, but I wouldn't want to do the one solo unless like, like C. Fuller said, if you're in a situation where you have to, because it's life or death, then I will figure it out and, and deal with it in that moment. Silas says, is there any good technique for using the rattan ring oh, to train? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if I survived it, you mean air conditioners and heaters? I'm in. I, I second that with air conditioner. Heater, <laughs> I don't right, care. So, but air conditioner, on. yes. If we do a survival <laughs> show, <laughs> I'm going to be yelling at these two like almost all day long. Y'all, stop complaining. <laughs> Shut up. Get over it. Dude, deal with it. Man, I swear if I hear you say one more word, I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm just done, y'all. You know, it could be indoors, no internet connection for three days. That's some surviving right there. I hate hot. <laughs> the only hot thing I want is my and chick. You know, it's in a bungalow with no air conditioning, no internet for three days. That's some survival right there. You guys are silly. <laughs> they're, they're, they're I don't funny. like hot. The they only don't. thing I want hot or my girls. <laughs> oh, Lord God Almighty. Come save us. Girlfriends. <laughs> Y'all, I don't know what's like, is going gone wild up in here. I don't know what's going on. Um, all right, let's see if anyone else has a question. We're just going to move along. I, I'm just moving along. <laughs> just move it along. along. Move it along. All right. Dominic says, weapon strikes hurt really bad. Like, you people don't know. Dominic, they don't know, and they they don't know what they don't know on top of what they don't know. Is Do you know? Bad. But you he know? knows, and I don't even know if they beat either one of you beaten, you know, you like they've beaten me. So I don't even know if you know. So like I think you know, but do you know? No, I don't know yet. I don't know. <laughs> you have to come in for some more trading for that. Uh, Andy Toby says, in relation to my sparring question, good to know. Too bad I'm not allowed to do damage. Yeah, see, it's really hard to know what you need to work on fully if you can't actually apply any pressure and actually hit each other and do some damage in a controlled manner where you work up through that as you guys get better and better and stuff. But if you can't even do that, how are you ever going to get there? That sucks. What you should do, this is just my thoughts on this, to see if any of the people you train you with want to train with you outside of the school so you guys can work on those things together. I, I think you have to kind of hit each That's other a little bit because you have to kind of train out the flinching of someone about to hit you because you can that could be used against you. Mm -hmm. So you got to get hit a little bit. And if you're going to do martial arts, you should just accept the fact that you're going to get hit. Yeah. And if you're doing martial arts with Sifu Fu, accept the fact that he might bite your nipple! Not bite. If it's life or death, it's going down. Actually, it didn't have to be life or death, so. Not might. Uh, <laughs> but with might. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you. It's the year of the tiger, right? <laughs> I believe so. Is it the Chinese New Year, the year of the tiger, right? I believe so. I think yeah, this was someone said last week or Asian something. Thing. Rocky, man. Eye of the tiger. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all. Okay, so <laughs> CT says, do you know what comes after a technique? Do you know the four stages of combat and three ranges? Okay, four stages of combat and there's four ranges actually. Okay, the four stages of combat obviously is the initial, then, then the connection, the follow through, and the finisher. Those are the, like the four movements you'll have at the beginning of combat. There's, there's the initial where you guys are feeling each other out. Okay, you see people standing, going like this, feeling each other out. Then there's the, the, the initial movement of a contact where one person will throw or both will throw at the same time. Then there's the follow through and how you're going to follow after that. And then the finishing moves. Okay, four ranges of attack. Are you playing Street Fighter? <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard some Street Fighter in there. Where do you think I got it from? <laughs> All yeah, those four. years of playing, he broke it down, y'all. <laughs> 
I want you listen. I want you to go back and listen to what he said, and then I want you to go. You know, if you for you guys who are old enough, dust off your old gaming system, play some Street Fighter. <laughs> You'll master it. Ah, uh, that's gonna be a good. Soul Calibur is where I learned my stuff. Soul Calibur, yes. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, the four ranges is long, mid, close, and then the fourth is actually the grappling stage. Those are the four ranges of com mm -hmm. combat. Okay, you got long your legs, you know, the range extending the arms, those are your long ranges. Mid range is basically along the hands, so the forearms, close quarters like that of the elbows, knees, stuff like that, and then obviously the, the grappling stage. Those are the four stages of, 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 of ranges of, of combat. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Akbar says, sorry guys, UK time here is 1.30 a.m. We'll catch the stream later for sure. Bless you. Thanks, brother. Bless you, too. Look what Arrow wrote. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm almost there. Send it to Sifu. What about hot soup? <laughs> right. He is the girl serving me the hot soup? Oh, Lord. <laughs> then, yeah, sure. No, uh, no problem. Do you know the I like spice, though. We that. I like spicy food, so it's hot. Uh, yeah, Errol says, hot girls, watch, you don't get burnt, seafood food, yes. It's okay, it's worth it if she's that hot. She, she probably spilled it all. Dude, he's going to get himself in so much trouble. We've been warning him. He's asking, like, he don't even know what he's about to He's like a 10-year-old. He's trouble. Yo, dude. No one should have left him out. You know, I'm free. Single. I'm single. <laughs> I'm free. And I say, if it's he's... free, it's me. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. There's some stuff in the scriptures you should probably revisit in this time of your life right about now to help you out, okay? Just to remind you what happens to people like that. All right, so <laughs> Lewis says, I was told that boxing should be applied to martial arts that someone already knows, like MMA. Is that also true for Kung Fu? Listen, anything that helps you get better with understanding how to create economy of motion, to create the power, the speed, the accuracy, whether it's boxing, whether it's kung fu, whether it's karate, which it doesn't matter because it's still energy that you're putting out. So whether you call this like you know a boxer's punch mm. or or a kung fu punch or a karate punch, it doesn't matter. It's how you do it that matters. It's that's what matters. That's why we always say don't let style define you, yep. let energy yeah, refine you. You. Yep. Uh, you can call it boxing, you can call it kung fu, you can call it karate, you can call it uh, jujitsu, you can call it uh, uh, you know popcorn. I don't care what you call it because that's not going to change right. the fact that yeah. is the energy right behind it. Mm -hmm. That's why we never tell people you have to change your style. It's refining what you do because mm -hmm. it's really, it really comes down to that. Yeah. Okay? It, it all comes down to that. Do you all generate the speed, the power, and actually do the damage to your opponent? And, and can you stop their attack from, from coming at you without you having the stress or strain and deal with that? It all comes down to that. You know, I, I did a seminar where I did it in a, a karate school. And uh, I, I talked about this before. I hook punched the karate guy. He was a black belt. I said, listen, I'm going to hook punch you. You're going to stop it best you can. Okay, I'll do it slow, but I'll, I'll give it power. And I just rolled right through his arm. Okay, he did, and I always talk about, you know, I love karate arm positions. I think they have great structures in, 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 in the way they move towards that position in the arms and everything. I always say, like, the bad thing about karate is that the energy behind it is actually faulty. Mm. It's like, think of it like um, an architect building a, a house, but it's made out of paper. Even though he can put the right structure, it's just not going to hold enough weight. The structural integrity is not strong enough. It'll break, okay? You have to get the right structural integrity behind the energy to support that as well. So karate, they do have great positioning and the holding of their arms. It's just the structural integrity behind it is wrong because they are actually driving from shoulder to hand rather than the three-proof using the wrist to create the base and, and the drive and the torque to create that power. They do it all from the shoulder versus like coming from the wrist and turning it. And I actually punched him in the head, not hard, but you know, just to show that I can make contact. And then we worked on doing the three proof, you know, I talked about the cry and I taught them how to do a base, drive, and torque the wrist. And I, we worked on that for like 15 minutes and then I demonstrated on him again. And this time, like he fell the first time, he did it wrong. I said, look, listen, raise a little more. Don't try to bring the arm out. Just pop it up more and push your elbow towards it. And uh, he, he was able to stop at that, that, that time. Once he started doing it, he still uses karate uh, motion it's just the energy behind it was more refined that he'd learned how to do it properly. And, you know, he, he was able to do it. So it's not about changing your style, whatever you want to call it. It's about refining the energy, the way you move in it, that makes it better. And that, that's what NDN is all about. It's not about changing your style. It's about refining what your energy behind that, what you do. Style is just a, a combination of movements that makes a style. That, that's yeah. all it is, you know. You say, oh, uh, we don't do that. Now, Wind Chun, oh, we don't grapple. I was like... Well, fine, you don't have to. I always say you don't have to. You just have to learn how to handle grappling. Um, 
they don't throw a hook punch. We had a question like, oh, with Wing Chun, is it okay to throw a hook punch in, <laughs> in Wing Chun? Because, uh, you know, we're taught not to. It's not good to throw a hook punch. And I said, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's not necessity. Right. But you have to handle it. You have to be able to handle it because other people can't believe in hook punches. And if you don't, that's but fine. You, you don't have yeah. to. But you have to handle a yeah. hook punch. You have to yeah. know how to handle that. And it doesn't matter what way you do it, whether we don't do it this way because it's not stuff. That's fine. But you got to handle someone who does. And you got to learn how to do that properly through the mm -hmm. proper energy to be able to handle that. And, and that's the key of all. Forget style. Throw that out the window because it's all the same in the end. Yep. It is, it is. Absolutely. And that's why I love what we do here at Anna Charlotte because we can help people do what they love but better by learning these principles that we teach with NDN. So... Uh, let's see, over on Facebook, let me just, cool, uh, let's see, anyone new? Lester said, yes, you're uh, the tiger. Richard said, Jamie, nice. Oh, looking nice. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. She's looing, <laughs> she's looing nice. Loo. Uh, I'm looing nice. I don't even know what that means. I'm kind of scared, y'all. All right, so, yeah. Yep, 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 you gotta be adaptable. That is what it's all about. CT says, I was always taught, I always taught my student, uh, there's a big difference between self-defense and real combat, life and death situation. Okay, well that's awesome. You know, our philosophy, this is ours. We don't believe in self-defense. Yeah. Because it puts you as the victim, it puts your mindset to not get hit, rather than to hit, to end the fight, you gotta do the damage. Mm -hmm. Or you gotta lock them up. So self-defense is about self-preservation, about trying not to get hit. And that puts, like I said, it puts you into yeah. blocking, exactly what he always said. <laughs> we don't block, we don't defend, because it, mm -hmm. again, it makes you receive the energy. We don't receive energy, we give it, okay? Um, we don't believe in self-defense because the mindset tells you got to get the pressure off of you. Right. We don't do that, we put the pressure into them. So for example, she throws a hook punch, right? We don't try to, to get this off of us, okay? Try to get out of it. When she throws a hook punch, I teach myself to get in and create the hit. De do the damage. Damage the limbs, damage the face. Don't ever defend. Because, you know, I always say, if you have to choose between being one or the other, either you defend and learn to block yourself so you don't get hurt, or be the one attacking, what would you rather be? Most people always say, I'd rather be the one attacking. Yeah. So if you, you already said that, then why train to defend? You already said that your goal, you'd rather be the attacker. So, and now some people say, well then, well, what happens if the guy attacks you? Counterattack back, right? I don't block, I don't parry, I don't, I don't try to move their hands, I get in the way. Like my mindset, I always tell my students, don't get their hands out of the way, get your hands in the way. So if she's throwing a straight punch, okay. my mental state is not to get her hands out of the way, okay? That, I, I don't put that in my student's head. Right. I say get in the way. She punches, I'm in. I get in the way. I don't get their hands out of the way. She throws a hook punch. I'm not trying to get hands out of the way. Okay? Don't throw a hook one. This will hurt because yeah. I'm going to do it. Uh, she throws a hook punch. My job is to get in the way. I, I hit the arm and then I hit the face. I don't go after the block or the deflection or, or the parry. There, we don't parry. We parry strike. Okay? There's a difference. She's throwing a punch. This is a parry. Okay? I'm just letting it move to the side. Parry strike. Don't punch hard. It's, it's, I engage that. See, I'm, I'm hitting her arm, and I take it out through the hit. So I don't try to take her arms over. I take it by, by hitting her arm and putting the pressure on her. I don't let her put pressure into me. I put pressure into her. And the question might go, well, what if the guy's like three times your size? Oh, it's okay. I'm not attacking their size. I'm attacking the point. I always tell people, focus on one square inch. Don't focus on the size of the person. So she's throwing like a straight punch. I'm not going like this and going against her size. I attack one square mm. inch. Just one square inch. If she's going like this, right? Yeah. It's like this. Here's Great. a good example. I go like this, right? She's pushing me. I push her. I'm going size to size, right? I don't want to do that, okay? She pushes me. I lock <laughs> the fingers out. Now, notice I take her whole entire body. I don't go after the size of the person. I go after the point. We don't focus yeah. on the mass. We focus yeah. on one square inch. Because I don't care if you're 100 pounds, 200 pounds, 300 pounds, 400 pounds. What's one square inch? It's still the same size. You go after their force and their being, their size makes the difference now. Their force behind the size makes the difference. 
Okay. I always like to say a bullet doesn't look at a guy who's like six foot three, or, you know, 480 pounds, just a solid rock. He doesn't go, oh, gosh, he's so big. I don't know if I can put a hole in him. No, it just shoots, puts a hole in him. And you notice that little tiny thing puts a damage at one small point, and it does enough to drop a huge man down. That's all it takes. One square inch, hit in a single point. Focus on that. Don't focus on trying to stop the size. I always tell people, if she says Jamie's coming to me, I'm going to use an open hand. Okay. So she walks to me. I'm not trying to go like this. And make her go away. When she comes at me, I want her to drop right where she stands. My goal is not to move the mass away. My, move, my goal is to break the point to drop the, the, the person at that spot. So hold so. up, y'all. OK, first of all, no more Sifu, no more. That's a mental state. Listen. These are philosophies. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Y'all, OK, when I had that pad earlier, he didn't even hit me as hard as he just hit me without the pad. He was supposed to do the other way around, hit me more with the pad Less without. Just throwing that out there. Taking one for the team over here. <laughs> Ralph says, great to see you guys as always. Thank you. Good to see you. Don says, Sifu, I think her other arm feels left out. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Should I hit the other arm? <laughs> I mean, right now, I'm just damaged all on the one side. I'm feeling a little uneven, John. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so. Uh, CT, I agree 100% attack and block at the same time. And, and, hands. And, yep. and CT, thank you for your service. Yeah, I was about to say, um, I, I'm glad that you uh, shared that because I was getting ready to say, um, CT also said, I'm a former airborne and special operations veteran and retired Shaolin Wing Chun instructor. Greetings from upstate New York. And yes, I was going to say thank you for your service. And uh, my ex-husband uh, was also airborne. So I know a little bit about that life. Um, and the, the member that I was talking about that we did an orientation with earlier that I said I would share a little bit more, um, his name is Ronnie. He is also um, from the military and he actually has been retired for one year. And he actually, funny enough, was uh, stationed at Fort Bragg, which was where my ex-husband was stationed. Um, and all that good stuff. So that was like kind of cool because there was a lot of connecting points there. But he, uh, at the end of the thing, said that we ended up spending about an hour with him. Normally, like we do that about 30 minutes. But like if we feel there's a need to go further in the orientation or things are just flowing, we're not going to cut. Too much. These are already <laughs> members, okay? So we're giving them that extra bit. You know what I mean? So. We're going the extra mile for them. So he said it was worth the $97 he paid just for that one hour. So I felt really blessed by that. Uh, but he also wrote in, he said, you helped walk me through and simplify a difficult decision. Thank you for being a soundboard to bounce an idea off of. That video conference helped me to set a course that is going to change the direction of my life for the better. And that's why we do what we do here at Enter Shaolin and here on Enter Tai Chi as well. So with that being said, we've already been Going longer than we're supposed to. Well, actually, we started at 8.40. <laughs> oh, okay. We're about to be right on time for our ending then. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. So uh, let me just go over real quick and see if we have any other stuff. CT says, thank you for your support. Keep up the fantastic job. Ah, thank you. We shall. We shall, we shall. Thank you very much. Jake says, greetings. Do you have any lessons on the retirement ring in any books? So we have our ebook um, out that you can get for free if you're brand new to what we do and you want to know more about what we do here at Intershellin. You can go to uh, intershellin.com forward slash gifts and make sure that you put in your best email address and then make sure to confirm your email address so we can send you how to access the free five uh, day course and as well as the free ebook that goes over our principles and everything that we do. We will be having more ebooks on different subjects in the very, very near future. That's something that we are really working on uh, this year to be able to add some different ways for you guys to train and get to know us and, and all that good stuff. So that is something that we're going to do. As far as the Rotan rings, we already have like, I want to say, I don't know, see for there, like what, I think maybe 15 to 20 lessons on the rattan ring? Maybe not, maybe not that much, maybe like 10 to 15 lessons on the rattan ring. We have lessons though. The point is we have lessons. Uh, we also, you know, if there's something we haven't covered yet that our members want us to cover, we do tend to make videos and stuff like that to add those different scenarios up, especially for our Abbott members. So yes. But you have to go to the site, uh, entershellen.com forward slash join and join there. 
Yes, Ed, we'll see you tomorrow. And we'll do more some towel applications for you. Yep, yep. CT, all right, all right, awesome. <laughs> and so it's the last thing, if it won't get too much giveaway tips for throws. Uh, we'll cover that we'll tomorrow. We'll do that at the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to save that, and we'll do that tomorrow, just because um, that way we can all get home since we were running a little bit late getting on with you guys, and we wanted to make sure to give you guys your full hour. So I will make sure to take care of that. So I'll have that for tomorrow. And I think, I think, Eddie told me you had a question from last week we didn't get to your second question that you had on the members only one, if I remember correctly. So if so, we'll be answering two of your questions tomorrow, which will be really cool. All right, family, I hope you guys had a good time. Thank you for coming on. If you haven't already, hey, Clint, hey, I hope we get to see you more tomorrow. I hope you get to catch the replay. Um, and those of you that are watching this later and watching the replay, if you guys and gals have any questions for next week that you'd like to have us answer live next week for you, you don't have to be on these live to get things answered. Just comment below and let no, us know. No, yes, I do. They, you look at you. Listen to you. Look, look. I, I love you guys. God bless. Peace. Oh, I have the power to turn it off. Nice try. Shalom. Listen, Shalom. if you don't show up, you don't get your question answered. Look at that. Look. Look how I just did it. I'm just saying, we can pick at least a couple ones that are, you know, good every once in a while. Maybe like a little prize or something like that. No? No? Okay. Anyways, family, we love you guys and gals. And for our members, we'll see you tomorrow. If you're not a member yet and you're not ready yet, go to anishalan.com forward slash gift. Get our free gift to you so you can check us out a little bit more and if you are ready to jump in and get access to all the stuff that we do at entershellen.com currently you definitely want to go to entershellen.com forward slash join and join okay all right see you guys and gals either tomorrow or next week peace thank you for coming and watching our webinars where we answer your question today i have a question for you have you ever had a problem where someone's size and strength makes a difference to you the bigger and the stronger they are the harder you find doing the technique have you ever had trained so hard and then have someone come out from nowhere just because he's genetically bigger you find that it's very difficult for you to do as well have you ever had a problem where you put a lot of energy into it and you feel you got very little out of it have you ever asked your teacher a question on a technique that you couldn't do and his explanation was more like get stronger, go faster, go harder. Well, you don't need to do that. What you really need to do is understand how the energy works behind what you do because it doesn't matter how big a person is or how strong they are. The reason why you have problems is because you've never been taught to control the energy. You've been taught to overcome it or try to prevent it altogether. What we teach you at NDN is how to manipulate energy while it's there. Not try to beat it, not try to get rid of it, but use it to your advantage. NDN is about a system of converting energy and manipulating that energy to help you become more powerful through his force. Couple that with yours and not yours against his. The beauty about NDN is it's not a style. It doesn't lock into what you should or should not do. It locks into how you should and how you should not do. NDN's motto is, don't let style define you, let energy refine you. And NDN is all about learning how to feel, manipulate, control, and utilize that energy to your advantage. And you were probably wondering, like, how could that be if someone's stronger than me, how can I use it? The analogy I always like to use is, no matter how big a vehicle is, as long as you control the steering wheel, the gas pedal, and the brake, you can control the force of that car. Or he could be the gas pedal to the world's most powerful car, you're the steering wheel. He says how fast he wants to go and when he wants to go, you're gonna tell him where to go with it. Everything is based on energy, science. Nothing is based on belief or philosophy. Everything is based on science. If we can't prove the, the physics behind it, then we don't bother teaching it. 
So come join us at Enter Shaolin and see what NDN is all about and it'll change your system forever.